coming up on Small Town Big Deal. It's the enormous Minnesota State Fair, and it's off the charts. Cuteness is on overload. Seeds become art. And it seems everything edible comes on a stick. Then, which small business owner is walking away with a $100,000 prize? Nationwide's Pitch to Win contest brings in the best of the best. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl, and we are at the Minnesota State Fair. And this is not just any state fair. I've probably been to 14 or 15. This fair is on steroids. Now, part of the reason might be because they started the fair in 1854 before they were even a state in the United States. Yeah, they are really passionate about their fair, and you're going to see why. The Minnesota State Fair is like a mega party with a guest list of two million, lasts 12 days, and offers hundreds of food choices. Are you eating my hot dog? Pretty much that's it. Also known as the Great Minnesota Get-Together, the fair is the second largest of its kind in the U.S. You'll find the 322-acre fairgrounds in the small town of Falcon Heights, a suburb near Minneapolis. From the end of August until Labor Day, city folks and country folks come together and have a great time discovering just what the fair is all about. The fair, of course, has roots in agriculture, and we really continued to make agriculture a part of what we do every single day here at the Minnesota State Fair. But it's also about educating an increasingly urban fair-going population about where their food comes from and the people who grow it. This is a place for Minnesota farmers to share stories of how they grow their prized crops and livestock, starting from the very beginning. You said it, one of the most popular exhibits is the Miracle of Birth Center, where fairgoers can witness live births and see newborn farm animals. Oh, he just got up for the first time. Every year, there are nearly 200 baby animals born in the Miracle of Birth Center. Some of these newborns just might be back at the fair in a few years to strut their stuff in the show ring. And they'll need to look their best if they're gonna compete with the likes of this shorthorn steer, shown by Elizabeth Jabs. For someone who's watching our show, who doesn't really get the whole like animal showing thing, how would you describe why it's important? Well, it gives us breeders an opportunity to showcase what we have available. It really gives the kids a great chance just to get out there and meet new kids too. These calves go through more preening and clipping and spraying than I think a runway model. Anything to give them the tiniest edge in the eyes of the judges. It's a very busy but um, rewarding experience for us. It's part of what we do all summer. It's the, it's the end product of all the activities that we do. And it teaches so many things, responsibility and all the, those kind of basics, but actually just learning how to speak to adults might be far surpassing all the other things that they can learn, but how to function in society and be productive, yeah. respectful, um, appropriate. Work ethic. Yeah, absolutely. And let's not forget the dairy cows. They show off in the ring and in the spectator-friendly milking parlor. Usually these cows on average are giving five to 10 gallons of milk in a day. The cows like being milked. It releases pressure on their udder. We do hand milking twice a day. And this woman, she was so excited. She just went, woo, woo, woo. And she said, I can't believe it. And they don't realize you know, how warm a cow is. And that excitement of touching a cow, seeing the milk come out, it's just amazing. The animal exhibits are a lot of fun, but they're also a great way to educate non-farm folks about livestock. People are always interested about the fun cow facts and learning more about cows, but they're really concerned about how we care for animals. You know, it's really satisfying after having a conversation with somebody, and they'll say, wow, we're so pleased that you, you really care about your animals. Not only do farmers care greatly about their animals, but also about the land and all the crops. And if it's grown in the state of Minnesota, there's a contest for it here at the fair. There's Minnesota fruits, here's Minnesota flowers, 
Here is Minnesota small grains and hops and Christmas trees and honey. And this fancy ag display is one of my absolute favorites. It's called seed art. To our knowledge, Minnesota is the only state in the United States at their state fair that has competition at seed art. They have to use the seeds only from farm crops that are grown in Minnesota. So I'm curious what comments you hear from people when they see this for the first time. They're somewhat amazed. It's unbelievable that you can make a portrait out of those seeds and to make it look like the person. It's amazing. So I found out what happens if you water your seed art. When we come back, a carnival of confection and a tilt-a-whirl of taste. There's no food like fair food. Pork chop on a stick. Cheese curds. And we indulge in a traditional treat that's so popular here, they serve it up in buckets. Oh, boy. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal from the land of 10,000 lakes and the Minnesota State Fair. It's a place for all kinds of fun. And it's also a place where people from small towns come to show off some of the best things the state has to offer, especially in the field of agriculture. There are thousands of exhibits spread all across this 322-acre fairground. We've shown you the big animals, but we're just getting started. If you prefer your critters smaller, maybe the bees and honey exhibit is for you. Or the butterfly house where guests can interact with hundreds of the colorful creatures. But the number one attraction for most fairgoers? The food. Pork chop on a stick. The olives on a stick. I'm, I'm a cheese on a stick guy. Minnesota folks seem to be obsessed with eating off a stick. The fair serves up some 80 different varieties on a stick. Pickles, anyone? How about chocolate bananas? Or this new one I found, a unique blend of cheese and Italian sausage. That's not to say everything comes on a stick. In all, there's 300 concession stands serving more than 500 different foods. There's food from all over the world here, and the fair is really kind of a microcosm of the larger food scene here in Minneapolis and St. Paul and Minnesota, you know, statewide. So again, a showcase of the wonderful things that our state can produce reflected in the food that we serve here at the fair. Off a stick or off the grill, Rodney and I love to eat. So it makes sense that we are invited to serve as honorary judges at the 4-H Club cook-off. I love 4-H in that the kids learn by doing. It's called experiential learning, and that's something they'll remember forever. These young people have learned a lot about cooking through their various 4-H projects. But now they'll be put to the test and bust their chops trying to win first place. Well played, Rodney, because today it's the Lamb Chops cook-off. How many of you actually showed lambs in the competition? Raise your hands. For these young grillers, this is the 100-yard dash. Just 30 minutes to prepare the perfect chop with all the fixings. Go, guys! And then, the big moment, the taste test. It has garlic, carrots, cheese, broccoli, cauliflower. That's nice. It's like butter. Okay, we love beef, and we love pork, and we love chicken. We're kind of on the fence on, on lamb. On the fence about lamb? Okay, now I love lamb. That's great. It was a very tough decision. Very tough. But first place today, we came up with the Fillmore Rebels. <laughs> This has got to be the first time I've come to a state fair or a county fair and I had broccoli and beans yeah. and cauliflower. So I'm feeling like now I can totally pick out an everything fried. But we <laughs> did have some big fat bacon before yeah, we, we did that. On a stick, of course. That was the best bacon I've ever had. But the sweetest and most famous treat at the Minnesota State Fair comes from Sweet Martha's Cookie Jar. We employ about 800 people and I would say that on average, we're selling between one and three million cookies a day between each of the three booths. This operation is massive. On busy days, the booth churns out almost 3,200 cookies per minute. And over the run of the fair, Martha's will go through 54 tons of chocolate chips. There's nothing like 
a warm chocolate chip cookie coming out of the oven. Martha's is famous for its cookies and its containers. You can buy a cone of cookies, or better yet, go for the whole bucket. The cookie pail comes with a resealable lid that hangs conveniently under the handle while you eat. Our pail is really made to share. We really want people to get it and be able to share it with their friends and family. It's so fun. So people, I think, really make it an experience to come and get the cookies. And do they come. In recent years, sales of cookies at the 12-day fair often top $3 million. Talk about cashing in on your chips. They've come a long way from the time Jennifer's parents started the cookie stand in 1979. On a whim, her parents submitted an application for a cookie stand. They got a call from the fair saying, you're accepted for chocolate chip cookies. So they threw together recipes that they had from both of their moms and opened up shop in, you know, a little 8 by 11 lemonade looking stand and just had no idea how big it was going to get. Family, food, and fun. There's no doubt that's Martha's recipe for success. And if you think about it, the same is true for the entire Minnesota State Fair. Two million people from all walks of life who all feel right at home with the fair. When you come to the fair, it's like you're coming back home to something that's comfortable, that you believe in, that is so supportive of the community, and I think that's another contributor to this fair's success. Coming up, we'll hear from the $100,000 winner of Nationwide's Pitch to Win contest. It's biocompatible, it's hygienic, it's waterproof. How one small business owner is changing a healing process using the same plastic as Legos. There you go. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. You know, America is known for its inventors. Wright Brothers, Thomas Edison, and countless others. I mean, their inventions really helped define our history. And that drive to invent, it lives on. <laughs> and there is no shortage of ingenuity and creativity. We got to be eyewitnesses to that inventive drive at the inaugural Pitch to Win contest. Up for grabs, a top prize of $100,000. The competition is sponsored by Nationwide and Blue Vine and is aimed at helping small businesses take big steps. Finalists gathered at Nationwide's headquarters in Ohio where they were able to make a five-minute pitch to the judges about their companies. It was exciting for the contestants and also a bit pressure-filled. This was my first pitch ever. I kind of think I blacked out during most of it. Everybody deserves to win, and so I'm just hoping that, you know, we're up there in the running. We had over 3,300 small businesses enter the Pitch to Win contest. That was narrowed down to 75 finalists who all submitted videos that were reviewed by an expert panel. From there, seven finalists were selected who were invited to come to Columbus and make their pitch in person in front of our live judges. And I appreciate the grit and the tenacity of uh, coming every day and working really hard of taking an idea and a dream and, and making it a reality. A wide range of ideas and products were presented. Among them, a unique brand of skateboard grip tape, an AI-enabled stethoscope, the next generation of on-the-go protein shake mixer bottles. Diana Hall was there to pitch her business, Active Armor, a whole new take on the old-fashioned plaster cast for broken bones. Active Armor is 3D printed out of the same plastic as Lego. So it's biocompatible, it's hygienic, it's waterproof, breathable, and it's custom fit to every single page compliance. After spending the day making their best pitch, it was time to announce the winner. We had over 3,300 entries that came in, and then you begin to narrow that down, and here we are with the best of the best. First place finalist, the grand prize winner, taking home $100,000 for their business, is... Diana Hall from Active Armor. After seeing Active Armor's big win, we decided to head out to Pueblo, Colorado, Diana's hometown, to see what Active Armor is all about. So the night that the winner was going to be announced, yes. were you nervous? How were you feeling? It was awesome because I really knew what this was going to be able to do for not only my, my company, but for the patients that we treat. Yeah. Because with that $100,000, I'm going to be opening up more clinics. At least one of them is going to be pediatric hospitals. 
The idea for Active Armor came while running a mentorship program for children. Diana encountered kids struggling to keep traditional casts clean during the healing process. There was one little girl who was sleeping on her grandparents' floor and she ended up with bed bugs under hers. <gasps> under her cat? Yes. Mm. And there was one little boy who couldn't keep his in a bag outside the shower by himself. He was being raised by elderly and disabled grandparents and he got it wet, he didn't tell, so he wore it wet for a long period of time and his skin broke down to the point where he had an infection and he ended up with permanent scarring on his arm. She measured the children's arms and made them each a plastic cast on her 3D printer. And just like that, Active Armor was born. Helping others is part of what motivates Diana. My brother had cystic fibrosis, so I spent my life in children's hospitals seeing kids have to adopt to medical devices instead of the other way around. And I knew that in my life somehow that was what I was meant to do. That was my mission. I couldn't wait to see how it all worked. Okay, so just hold still for me and if you look up on the screen behind you, you can see your image coming up and you see this is accurate to the half millimeter of your body scan. So you're going to see all of your veins and your musculature and everything and it's going to fit you and only you perfectly. It's already done? Yeah, that was it. One, two, three. Antoine Burton knows firsthand about injuries and playing through the pain, both as a former NFL defensive tackle and now as he executes performance programs for athletes. I didn't know professional athletes would sometimes play with a broken bone. That's a norm. If, it, if you're able to do it, that. I had no idea. And obviously you can't play with a broken leg, but anything from your elbow down and you can still function, you're going to try to do whatever you can to get on that field or court for 100%. Doctors are also praising Active Armor, and after an injury, orthopedic surgeon Dr. Alex Romero even became a patient. The great thing about it is being a surgeon, my work is in the operating room. With a traditional cast, you just can't do that. Yeah. So you could continue to do surgery yep. with that Active Armor cast on? We did. And then you can take those off. And do what do you hope to see Active Armor say in 10 years? I would like to see it become a standard of care for everyone. I would like to see it available in major hospitals and clinics across the country so that patients that really need it have access to this hygienic alternative to traditional casting. Explode, explode, good, good, good. I think this could be a global phenomenon, I really do. It'd be hard for me to understand how you couldn't see how could, this could help not only non-athletes, but athletes, of course. So I, I think it's gonna be a really big deal. Pitch to Win illustrates how much Nationwide and Bluevine believe in small businesses and care about their success. Your small business could be next to win grant funds. For more information and to enter this year's contest, visit pitchtowinbig.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. It was fascinating to meet Diana, learn about Active Armor and 3D printed casts. You know, we're proud to highlight Nationwide and all they do to support small business. Don't forget to check out pitchtowinbig.com and enter your small business in the next contest. And congratulations to Nationwide, who once again has received top honors from J.D. Power & Associates, receiving the highest customer satisfaction ranking for small commercial insurance. As a kid, I never wanted to leave the fair, and I sure had those same strong feelings again. And if you've got a story idea, go to our website and submit it. Who knows, we might be coming to your town next. And be sure to go to our Facebook page and hit like, and we'll keep you up to date on all the great upcoming episodes. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Where's my hot dog? You ate my hot dog, and now you're eating a second hot dog. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Did they ask us to be judges because they think we know how to cook? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, well, let's they, hope not. They looked at us and said, those two people know how to eat. <laughs> <laughs>